Hello and welcome to the Valentine's Day edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying to mend our broken heart. Um, and that's because the puzzle on screen is called Broken Heart, and it's by the magnificently clever Sam Kappelman Lines and the eagle-eyed amongst you will have realized this is not a Sudoku puzzle. This is a 10 by 10 grid, and it is in fact a star battle puzzle. I have got no clue why it's called Broken Heart, but it is. And um, yeah, and this this one's a strange puzzle. I think, I think it's been around for months and months and months, but we've had it recommended to us about four times over the last couple of days uh, and apparently it is an unusual star battle in that it is mighty hard indeed and some of you have been asking for hard pencil puzzles on the channel well today you get your your, your chance I think um, by all accounts this one is a bit of a uh, yeah it's going to make us um, stretch our grey cells um, anyway, what else do I have to mention before I read you the rules of this one? I don't think very much. Um, just a reminder, if you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, and if you're not, why not? It's the best Sudoku club on earth. And I'm, I'm not using hyperbole there. It genuinely is. Uh, it's a couple of bucks a month. And you're, many of you, over a thousand, I think over 1,200 last time we checked, have correctly solved the quite approachable Sudoku hunt um, over there. So very well done to all of you. And those of you who are still yet to try it, you've still got another six days to get your entries in to be eligible to win a prize. So um, do, do, do try and have a go at that if you haven't had a go already. And thanks so much for the feedback. Those of you who have sent in answers, many of them have been uh, I've also included some kind comments which we're most grateful for. Um, anything else to say? I don't think so. Do like the video, do subscribe, you know, the, you know the drill. What are the rules of star battle and why, oh why, is there not a star battle in every newspaper of the land on every day of the week? I do not know because star battle is the most wonderful, wonderful puzzle and it, it's a bit like Sudoku, in fact probably the rule set in Star Battle is even easier than Sudoku. Um, what, what our job is today is we need to put two stars in every row. So each of these rows has to have two stars in it. Each column, so every column has to have two stars in it. And every region, so there's a funny region there that looks like the Joshua tree, um, that region. Every region, every outlined region has to have two stars in it. So there's only one other rule, and that is that if a cell is a star, or what shall I use? I'll use red to indicate star. If a cell is a star, none of the cells surrounding it, including the diagonally touching ones, can be stars. So we could immediately say, if this cell is a star, all of these green cells cannot be stars. And that's all the rules. So it's incredibly simple rules. And yet these puzzles so often yield, or they yield this wonderful logic. Um, and I've got high hopes for this one. As I say, a lot of people who wrote to us about this said that this is a really fantastic puzzle. So do have a try. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And surely I have to start here. Because why do I want to start here? Well, I can see straight away that cell can't be a star because if that's a star, all of those cells are not stars. And now I'm going to have big problems filling two stars into this region. I can only put one star in it. So that cell there is not a star. I'll use green for not a star. Now, the corollary of that, and something that's very important to, to note in star battles, actually, I'll, I'll just tell you this. Um, how many stars can I put in that little blue region there? And the answer is always one. Because in any two by two in a star battle, you can't put two stars in. If I try and make this cell a star, because of the rule about stars not touching, all of the other blue cells are immediately not stars. So in any two by two, you can put one star only. So the way I do star battles is I basically, in, in, in my mind, in the grid, I'm constantly doing this. I'm, I'm sort of trying to divide the puzzle up into two by two areas and asking questions. And so in this, in these shapes at the bottom, you can see there must be a star in one of those three cells, and there must be a star in one of those three cells. Um, and we don't know where those stars go, but that those two things must be true. So let's try and take that forward. So now I'm thinking about um, 
column 9 and 10, I suppose. I almost said column 8 and column 9, but this is not a Sudoku. Column 9 and column 10, this little shape, the sort of shape that looks like a, the letter B, that must have two stars in it by the rules of the puzzle. Well, the blue region at the bottom will be a third star, so that's three. And in these two columns altogether, there will be four stars because there's two stars in each column. So we're looking for one more star. And I don't know where it goes, but what, well, one thing I do know, look, is that this can't be a star. Because if that's a star, because I have to ring it with greens now, all I'm left with in my B region is that two by two, and that's not enough to put two stars into it. So we can immediately say that this little cell is green. Um, now, what do we do next? I've got the Loch Ness Monster down here with Nessie poking her head up. Um, hmm, can we do something with this? Sometimes I've, I've seen puzzles before where you've got a sort of nested R shapes. How do we use that? So those, these cells I've just outlined have to contain exactly four stars. Two. Uh, that then, yeah, they don't actually parcel up nicely into two by twos that we can do much with. I don't think. What about what about this stiletto heel at the top then? Because the sort of tip of the stiletto heel can't be a star, I must put two stars into that region. No, sorry, that's useless as well. Um, right. Okay, so what on earth is going on with this? I was expecting it to be difficult, actually. Um, so. Uh, oh, Simon. Oh, so <laughs> I'm so blind. I apologize. I apologize to all those of you who are shouting at me and saying, why can't you see the big heart shape in the middle of the grid? Well, I can now, I've just seen it. There is a great big heart shape in the middle of the grid, which is presumably why this is called broken heart. Yeah, okay. Okay, this, two, three, four, yeah, this, right. Ah! <laughs> okay, there is something going on with the big broken heart shape in the middle of the grid, which, looks very important to me because if you look at the big broken heart shape and ask how many regions the big broken heart shape is made up of you will you will acquire the answer of two so how many stars are in this great big shape the answer is four because there are two stars in each shape now this divides by the looks of things rather nicely into two by twos Let's in fact just do that. Let's divide it up into two by twos and see, see what we can see. So there are seven two by twos in this region and four of those only can have stars in them. Right, and this is massively, massively powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so so slow. I'm so sorry. The the reason this is so powerful is that um, if you've done enough star battles, especially ten by ten star battles, you will know that if you can ever isolate a particular two by two as not having a star in it. So let's just imagine for a moment that this didn't have a star in it. So we can turn it green. Now let's ex let's examine column three and column four carefully. What would the result of this two by two not containing stars be? Well, because in the remaining two by twos in this column, I can only put one star. I could put one star here. I could put one star here. I could put one star here and I could put one star there. And that would be four stars, but I must do that. I must do each of those things in order to get four stars into the column. So the moment that we knew that there was one empty two by two in, these, in this column, we know all the other two by twos have to be filled. And that's massively powerful here. I've seen a puzzle that did something like this before. Um, and it was in, I remember it very clearly because it was such an incredible puzzle. And I think we, we covered it in a video on Cracking the Cryptic, but it would have been at least two years ago. 
if I remember and if I can solve this puzzle in this video ever appears, I will I will put a link to it on the screen because it was an incredible puzzle and it appeared in the Taketa magazine, I think. Uh, if you've never if you've never, by the way, got the Taketa magazine, well, prepare you've got incoming joy coming your way because uh, it's a magazine published out of Japan features only handcrafted content by wonderful constructors and there was a star battle in that that was for the ages that used something like this trick there was a big funny region in the middle of the grid that you could divide into two by twos and then the logic is of course really important because having said that only four of these seven two by twos can have a star in it, three of them must be empty. Now, what would happen if we put, if we made this two by two and this two by two empty? Well, then we can never put enough stars into row five and row six. We could put one there, one there, and one there. That's only three stars. So, so we can't align our empty two by twos within the star shaped region i.e. they can never share two rows or two columns um, and that means and that means that uh, no we can't quite specify exactly where they go but we can say a lot here I think we can say a lot so let's look at this collection firstly we know that it's not possible that two of these three two by twos don't contain stars because that will that will make the rows impossible so it's also not possible that all three of these contain stars because if all three of these contain stars i'll only have one star left for all of those cells there and that will mean that there are two empty uh two empty two by twos in these rows and that will break these rows so exactly one of these must be empty. And by analogous logic, exactly one of these must be empty. And that means, because there are three empties, this is empty of stars, and that the bottom of our heart is green. <laughs> Which is a slightly absurd colour to choose. But I didn't choose it because I didn't realise there was going to be a, a heart involved in this. So. The bottom of our hearts are green and yes and this is very important isn't it because now let's switch to looking at columns where we have an empty two by two in columns five and column six so every other two by two in this column must be filled with stars so there must be stars a star here and a star at the bottom here so now um that's good <laughs> um Oh yeah, now I might have to change my highlighting here, thinking about this. Because at the moment I'm using red and yellow in these two columns as saying there are stars, but there are not. Yeah, okay, we need to go further. We need to go further here. We need to think about these eight cells. And we need to, because we know because we now know the specification of columns five and six, and we know in particular that these cells, this two by two and this two by two, do contain stars. We know, we know that we need to put two empty two by twos into those regions. Now the simple question here is, can these align? So is it, if this is not a two by two, if, this, if there is no star in this two by two, is it possible that there is no star in that two by two as well? No, clearly not, because that's gonna to empty too many two by twos in columns three and four of stars, and we could only put three stars in. So whichever one of these is not star, and it could be this one or this one, the other one must be star. And then, yes, we've got an X-wing on, on two by twos, which have stars and not stars. So, yeah, in this region here and this region here, one of the two by twos has a star in it. One of them has, doesn't have a star. And let's say this one didn't have a star. Well, now we know this one must have a star to fill row three and four. And this one couldn't have a star. 
in order to um, in, ensure that we had the right number of stars in the heart. Now the alternative to that of course is that um, this one would be green and this one would be green. So there's like an X-wing on the on the absence of stars. Now, so I think I should probably highlight these in a different color, shouldn't I? Because in that region there, I know there's exactly one star. And in this region here, I know there's exactly one star. So I'll, I'll try and keep colors going. So that, so by having these colors all the same, that just means there's one star in that whole region. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we continue by looking at rows seven and eight? where we have an empty two by two. So that means everything else, uh, I don't quite know how to do this so that it's clear, but every every other two by two, oh, every other two by two must contain a star. So this one's got, that one's got a bit confusing because we've got an overlap here of the purple. We know there's a star in the purple, but we also know there's a star in the red and there's a star in the yellow. <laughs> So this could get very tricky. Um, ah, ah, but hang on. I Because I know one of, there's exactly one star in the purple. How do I fill columns? Uh, what is it? I'm getting confused because I've got 10 columns to deal with. Um, seven and eight. How do I fill columns seven and eight with four stars? I can put one in that two by two, one in purple, that's two, one in red is three, so there must be one in yellow at the bottom. And that's right, this is huge. This is absolutely huge because, yeah, that's huge and beautiful. Uh, look at the key shape region here. Now this key shape region, when we combine it with the shape in the bottom right, those two regions must have four stars in them. But the bottom four, four by four of the grid now, this, this shape here has one blue star, one yellow star, one red star and one yellow star. It's got four stars in it. So that's all the stars that we can put in the key shape region and this region here. So the key shape region can't have any more stars in it. These can't be stars. The whole of the rest of the key shape region is not stars, which means there's definitely a star here. Um, now, do we know more than that? So, I don't know. I want to know more than that, but I'm not sure that I do. Um, but let's go back to columns seven and eight then. This region at the top must have a star in it to make sure we get four stars in the column or the two columns combined. And we can do the same logic with the blue region. Look, the blue region is one star. That red region is one star. We still need two more stars in these columns. So that's got to have a star in it. This, oh, right, okay. So this has got to have a star in it at the bottom, this domino of yellow. Ah, now. I've got a yellow domino and a red domino in row 10. So that's my two stars for that row. So these are not stars. The, aha, there we go. Now in my blue region, I've only got one cell left that can be star. I'm gonna use black for star because I've, I was gonna use red, but then I've realized I've put red all over the grid everywhere. So now, now they can be greened. Um, now, okay, we know, that we know that there is a, yeah, this is really good. In purple, which originally included this cell, there was one star to be placed. Well, now these two, because there's definitely a star in this domino here, neither of these cells can be star anymore. And now let's look at yellow, which I think was originally those four squares. That's only got one star left in it. So that's the star which is also coincidentally the purple star. I've got two stars now in row nine. These have to be greened. These have to be greened. The yellow doesn't show up very well to me against the green, but I, I can't do anything about that. Um, 
Have I got two stars? Yeah, I think I have. I've got two stars in my key shape region now. So all of these cells, you know, if you try and put a star here, you're ruling st stars out of this domino. So none of those squares can now be stars. That's eaten up a whole great chunk of my purple look. These can't, ah, in this row, we've got two stars already. So none of those can be stars. So we've got a star domino here and a star domino there, but these are crossing the borders. Ah, but look at Nessie. Look at Nessie. Nessie's already got two stars already in her. She can't have stars in her head as well, or that would be a disastrous number of stars. So actually we can green those in. That red becomes a star. It doesn't touch anything. That becomes a star. Uh, oh, okay. And that's two stars in the sort of the gonzo, gonzo head here. So that's not a star. Yeah, sorry, got interrupted. I got a phone call from none other than Mark. And now Mark's in Italy at the moment. So I thought I'd better take that call. Uh, I think he's due back tomorrow. So um, yeah, so sorry about that. Now, where, where were we? We were just getting, I think we just got some stars in the bottom here. Uh, yes, we had just got a star there. So we've got to put a star well, we've got to put another star in column one, haven't we? And that must be in one of those five cells. So that means in the R shape in the top left of the grid, there must be a star in those four cells, which, um, which might matter uh, for reasons I can't quite see. Um, or we can, What else can we do? Well, one thing we could do actually, our, our, our big B-shaped region has now become a much more proportioned B-shaped region, hasn't it? So if we look at this now, we can definitely divide this into two by twos. We've got a two by two here and a two by two there. So let's make that one yellow and this one red. So the yellow, this yellow domino must contain a star, which means neither of those cells is now a star. That cell is not a star. And um, Ah, no, but hang on, now I've offset my starage. Ah! <laughs> Everything I've just done I think is true, but I don't think it's maybe sensible. Because now I've, I've what I mean is I've sort of warped uh, the effect of my heart-shaped logic, haven't I? Because in my heart-shaped logic, I knew that there is exactly one star in blue and it's either in this two by two or this two by two and there was exactly one star in purple which was either in this two by two or this two by two and that they were going to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So this is this matters because because they were going to form an x-wing of of non-stars or non-starage in in each row of in each well in each of these two rows in this row here there is definitely either no star in that two by two or no star in that two by two. That means that means that every other, that means there must be a star in this two by two by force. And there must be a star in, the, it must be one star in this two by two. And that matters because if there's one star, oh no. No, maybe, it, oh, hang on, now I'm getting confused. If there's a star in that two by two, hmm, what does that mean for the world? I don't know if I can. I was just, I was hoping I was going to be able to resolve that one of these was a star, but I don't think I can. Although maybe I can repeat that logic because I know that either this two by two or this two by two doesn't have a star in it. So again, this must be a real two by, well, that there must be a star by in that two by two, and there must be a star in this two by two. Ah, that's better. 
That's better, because if there must be a star in this 2 by 2 I therefore know it's in this domino. Therefore there is no star in that 2 by 2 And now, by the logic in row 3 and row 4, if we go back to that again, I've got one star here, two stars, exactly one star in the purple and the blue, that's three stars, and one star which is now in yellow. So that becomes a star. That's not a star anymore. And... Ah, OK, now I've got four stars in columns 9 and 10. I've got two there and one in each of these dominoes, so there's no more stars at the top of the grid. And that means that... Right, yeah, that means something for the sort of stiletto shape region, doesn't it? Because now I've got to put two stars in my stiletto shape region. Well, I can put one star in yellow and one star in red. Therefore, I must put one star in yellow and one star in red. Therefore, this cell in yellow can't be a star. Because if that's a star, I can only put one star in red then, and that will underperform or underwhelm my, my stiletto region. So this square becomes green. And now we will... It's clever this though, isn't it? It's, it's not rolling over and letting us tickle its tummy, even though I'm sure that this whole heart region was the key to it. Um, so we've got to... We've got to figure out what's going on. Ah, yeah, yeah, this is, this is nice. Well, it's, it's mildly nice anyway. It's sort of vanilla ice cream. It's not. It's not chocolate chip um, or chocolate fudge brownie, but it's quite nice because column one has a star in one of those. Therefore, this R region must have a star in one of these. But now this is green, so that star in the in the sort of in the top bit of the R is in one of three cells there. So this can't be a star, or all three of those couldn't be a star. So that's not a star. Now, now in the R region, is it really possible to have two stars vertically in that? Or is that going to... No, it, I don't know if that would break this, the need to have an R in the top of column one. So... Hmm... <laughs> so where do we look now? Answers on a postcard, please. I have not got a Scooby-Doo. We've got, we've got a star in there. We've got to put a star. We've got exactly one star in blue and exactly one star in purple. And we've got to put a star. We've got one star in row one here. Ah, okay, that cell can't be a star, because if that's a star, how is row one ever going to work? We're going to have a star here, and then you're going to have to put a star here to fulfill the red requirement for a star. That's two stars there, and we know there's a star in one of those three. That's three stars in the row. That won't work. So that's not a star, which means there's a star in the yellow domino, which means neither of those cells is a star which means there's a star in the red domino, so neither of those cells is a star. Ah, that nearly is interesting. So now, what's that doing? That is locking a star. This red domino is definitely in this sort of, in the emu shape, isn't it? So we've got a star in emu, we might have another star from the blue or the yellow. Oh, is that all the possibilities for the... Oh, no, no, hang on, I could put one in purple as well, so ignore me. Um, so in Emu, Emu's got many opportunities to have extra stars. And in, in the Joshua tree... Oh, we can only put one star in purple, so those two can't both be stars. So maybe the Joshua tree is the place to... Oh, but the yellow could be a star. Uh, 
Um, hmm. But hang on a minute. That's beautiful. Right. Yes. Okay. I want to look at the Joshua tree. Not only do I occasionally like to listen to the Joshua tree, I like to look at the Joshua tree because this little cell is rather beautiful. And it's beautiful because it's the beak of emu. It's not in the Joshua tree. So were it to be a star, remember in purple there is one star. So both of those purples get ruled out from the Joshua tree starage. This cell sees this cell, so that's not a star. And now I think I'm right in saying that in the Joshua tree there is a lone domino over here that could have a star in it. We can't put two stars into a domino. That won't work. That means that cell is, is definitely um, not worthy of starage. That becomes green. And I bet that works. Does it work if we try and put a star here? Because that again, that, lim that takes both of these cells out of the Joshua tree. Ah! No. No, oh, nearly. I don't think it's quite as good, actually. That cell, we'd have to put a star in here. And we'd have to put a star in here. So that's actually possible, I think. Bobbins. <laughs> bobbins, bobbins, bobbins. Um, so we can't get rid of this one. So we've got three purples left and eight blues. That's a disaster. So we're going to have to look for something else. Um, or can... no, I'm not sure. I would like to look at... Oh, can I do some... yes, I can. Row one and row two need four stars. One, two, three. So there must be one in the top left corner of the grid for a fourth. So one, two, three, four. Okay, that's... Oh, but what's this two by two? Ah, I thought I'd broken it then because I can't, couldn't see the difference between yellow and green, but I can just about see enough of a difference to tell you something interesting about these two columns. So this, this is something I often get wrong in star battles when I'm doing my two by two sort of divisions in my head. But look, because I'm so focused on the two by twos I've already got that I fail to see the two by twos that I could make if I recolored the grid. But look here, this is a two by two that is entirely green. And that would allow me to allocate stars to columns two and three because, the, because there's no star in this two by two, there must be a star in this two by two, there must be a star in this two by two, there must be a star in that two by two, and there must be a star in that two by two to make four stars. So if I have to put a star down there, you can see I've got to put one there. So that's a star, that's not a star. Um, that means, uh, that well, it offers the opportunity, which I'm not going to avail myself of, to sort of overlap this two by two with another two by two and overlap that two by two, etc. Because um, that feels like it would be a bit, a bit of an overkill to do that. So, so what then do we do next? We should. I'd love to know, even approximately, where <laughs> which of these blue cells was going to be the star. So if that's a star, I've got to put a star in purple. So if that's a star, that becomes a star. And we get all sorts of starage in the grid. And I'd have one star in my Joshua tree. Couldn't have any stars in those cells. Hmm, I can't immediately see the problem with that. If that's a star, on the other hand, you can't put a star in either of the other purples. So you'd have to have a star here. 
Oh, that's hurting my Joshua tree. How dare you hurt my Joshua tree? Are you hurting it badly enough, though, that there's a problem? That would then have to be a star. It's making things awfully constrained in rows four, five, and six, actually. Awfully constrained. I'm not sure if it's brokenly constrained, but it's certainly awfully constrained. Um, hmm. Not quite seeing it. I think there's a problem there, but I can't quite see what it is. Two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, for goodness sake, I know one something we can do that's really simple. Let's have a look at these two um, columns. And again, we've got to reallocate our colouring. We've got one star there, maximum. One star here, maximum. One star there, maximum. That means this square here must be the fourth star in these two columns. There's no other way, way of doing it. So that's a star and that's not a star. Now, well now these three cells, so I've got a star here. I can only have one star in these three cells, which means, and the corollary of that is I must have two stars in these three cells. And the corollary of that is that you could never put a star in either of those two cells. Because if you put a star here, you're ruling out two of these cells from being stars, and you'd only let one star exist in column five. So those two squares have suddenly turned green. This puzzle's ridiculously difficult. I've now got a T-shaped blue region. And I took another cell out of my Joshua tree. Oh. Oh, hang on. Have I, have I now broken my Joshua tree? Don't break your Joshua tree. Oh, yeah. That square can't be a star anymore. Because if that's a star, where am I putting my stars in my Joshua tree? I can't put another, I can't put a star in purple at all. I could put a star here. That would be one star. But this can't be a star. Because there's definitely a star in the red domino and there's a star there. So there's no more stars in row four. So that would not be able to be a star. You could only have one star in your Joshua tree. Don't only put one star in your Joshua tree. That won't work. So that becomes green. Now my, I've got my purple down to two now. So this must now resolve, mustn't it? Um, so which do I think is the least likely to work? When I looked at this, I don't think that I don't like the look of this. This feels to me more tricky to fill the remaining stars into these rows. If that was a star, then that would be a star. That would be a star. Um, I'm not exactly even sure how much further we'd be able to go with that. We'd obviously be able to do some stuff in the columns, but it doesn't seem to be nearly as constraining on these rows as if this is a star. Because if this is a star, you have to put a star here. And then you've got problems with your Joshua tree. You've got to put a star there. That's forced. Now my Joshua tree is done. Is my emu done? No, emu is not done at this point. So emu would need to resolve somehow. I couldn't have stars in either of those cells because these would rule out the ability to have enough stars into row four of the grid. So these would not be stars. I appreciate this is making the highlighting that I've done very difficult to understand. Um, so is this broken for some reason? That's the question I want to ask myself. And if it is broken, can I see why it's broken? One, two, three. Oh, hang on, I've got to be careful as well about labeling cells that can't be stars. Um, No, this doesn't work, does it? This I don't think this works. Let me show you. If this is if this is black, a star, then this is a star. That's for sure. And to complete my Joshua tree, this is a star. 
that's 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 some truths that emerge but now i've actually got four stars in um in column or in row three and row four so in terms of my blue region all of these have to turn green but also this domino has to contain a star so there's no stars in these cells either so this is forced to be a star and now i can't put now i can't fill row six of the grid at all so this doesn't work. So it's a little bit complicated to see, but it is it is visualizable because I have visualized it. And, and to, to prove that to you, what I will now do is do this slowly. So let's imagine that these three cells are all stars. What's the what's the overall implication of that? Well, these two squares now have to not be stars, which means this domino contains a star. So this domino does not have a star in it, which actually and this is this is breaking for all sorts of reasons now. Um, we can't have stars in there because that's going to be a fifth star in these two in this row and this row combined so at the moment if you look down this is not a star because we had our star in purple here but look um, we have to put a star here and now where are we going to put a second star in this row it can't be, there's none that can exist so it's, t it's utterly broken it breaks in this row or it breaks in this row whichever whichever I think whichever whether you put this one in first or not or or you decide there's a star in one of those three then it's gonna it's gonna have to be here and that's gonna break this row instead so it breaks in these two cells and that is lovely because that means this is not a star and if that's not a star our final digit or not digit our final cell which can be purple uh, which well final purple cell which can be a star is that one which means that's not a star which means this is a star which are ah, now i've got two stars in column nine so that's not a star this is a star now that's not a star and this is a star um i've got my two stars in column eight look so that's no longer a star that oh this is quite clever so now this domino rules a star out of that cell so that becomes a star, which rules stars out of those two cells, which makes this cell, you've guessed it, a star, nori nori. Then we've got, oh, oh, nearly, hopefully this isn't broken because this star is absolutely running riot over the grid. Firstly, it rules all of those cells out from being stars. So I've only got two blues left. Secondly, it's locked a star into this domino, which is the second star of column one. So all of those cells can't be stars now. So now there's a domino here that's a star and a domino here that's a star. Ah, I see. And I've got two stars in row five. So that's not a star, which makes this a star. Um, now, what else can we do here? Hopefully something else or we really are in trouble. We've got to put... How many stars have I got in? Oh, I've got a star in this domino. So that's two stars in this row and my blues are now fixed. I've got to put a star there, which stops that being a star, makes this a star. Now I've got two stars in that row. So that's not a star and this is a star. And that's good because it's getting into the top of the grid. And by uniqueness, we could tell that something had to hit the top of the grid. So that's no longer a star. This is a star. And we've got two stars in this column, so that's not a star, and this is a star. Now, I'm not going to claim this is the correct solution until I have convinced myself my Joshua tree has two stars, and it does. Does Emu have two stars? Emu does have two stars. Does every row? Yes. Every column? Yes. And no stars are touching one another. Da da. Now, if I click tick, it says it doesn't look right because it's testing it for Sudoku. But I think it is right. I think it is right. And it is magnificent, isn't it? Uh, it's a quality puzzle by Sam, as always. I mean, with it, with it, when it's got Sam's name on it, you know it's going to be brilliant. But it's that's incredibly clever and incredibly hard for a star battle as well. 
Um, so I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you it didn't leave you with a broken heart and that you got everything you wanted on this Valentine's Day. Thanks so much for watching and spending some time with me on this evening of all evenings. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>